What do you say, everybody? With Tony Sukalis, I'm Mick Gillespie. Welcome to Bama Insider, BamaInsider.com. This is the Alabama Rivals site, and you're hanging out with us today on our YouTube channel, 50,000 plus strong. And as we look to 100,000 subscribers, we only have you guys to thank. And if you're not part of it, hey, it's free. Just click subscribe and hang out with us. Also, give us a thumbs up as you watch the show. We appreciate those so much. Super chats are uh, also something that we love. And we're going to talk about your favorite subject, Alabama football. Tony Sukos is the beat writer for the Alabama Rival site. And he's put together quite a nice piece that you can read at BamaInsider.com. And it's how Alabama is going to transition from this guy here, Mac Jones, who was the quarterback that led Alabama to one of the greatest seasons in program history and their 18th national championship to a new guy that has a different way of doing it, but someone in Bryce Young that we anticipate being the starter, Tony, who has been in this situation before. Yeah, the situation that Bryce Young is in right now is, is not un, unlike the situation he was and when he uh, was at Matter Day High School, uh, when he transferred as a junior, he was replacing JT Daniels, you know, the Georgia quarterback now, obviously previously at uh, Southern California. JT Daniels was the 2017 Gatorade Player of the Year. He threw to Armand Roth, St. Brown. Uh, it was a pretty much a similar connection to what Mac Jones and Devontae Smith had uh at alabama last season where they're setting records and they're you know they're going on to win a national championship uh, at, at the prep level um and a lot of people doubted whether or not bryce young who wasn't playing in the trinity league he was playing at los angeles this is uh cathedral high school he's tearing it up there but it was a different level of competition um and a lot of people wondered if bryce young was going to be able to kind of step in and and, and fill in for daniels and, and i mean obviously those were huge shoes to fill and obviously uh, Bryce Young, with the, the talent that he had, was able to do that. He led um, Matter Day to a state title his first season, uh, on route to a, a historical season his senior year. And then obviously, you know, the, the rest is history. Number one quarterback in the 2000 class um, was, you know, didn't play this year at Alabama, but he's obviously set up for success at Alabama. So um, he's kind of finds himself in a familiar position. And I think now, uh, after a little bit of a frustration his freshman year, I think there's a little bit of doubt starting to creep in around Bryce. And I, I just think that it's a very uh, similar place that he's at where he's going to be able to prove doubters wrong this this next season as well. J.D. Daniels, starting quarterback for, for Georgia, we're anticipating. He was at USC and a very accomplished quarterback someone in the state of California that was like a high school record setter. So Bryce Young's come in after just about as good of a quarterback as you could have in high school. And I feel like that's the same situation with him following up Mac Jones. Exactly. And, and, you know, there's, there's some questions too. Whenever, you know, it, it's really nice to be the, the backup quarterback and to come in. I think when, you know, at, at this time last year, maybe, or maybe a little bit earlier, uh, there was a lot of talk about Bryce being the the starter at quarterback for Alabama last year. And I think that there was, he was almost infallible at, at times uh, to, to certain members of the fan base who thought that he was just going to be this, you know, next savior. And so when you do see a little bit of struggles at times last season, you know, uh, granted they were in very difficult times. Um, I think that there's some people wondering if, if he can step in and, and fill the shoes of Mac of Mac Jones with, with so much departing stars on the offense and, you know, uh, obviously Mac Jones had such a great year. Um, so it, it just creates a, a unique situation where Matt, uh, for Bryce kind of went from a, a situation of, you know, hype to now he's once again proving himself. And the, the funny thing about this, Mac, is as successful as Bryce has been throughout his career, he's always had to prove himself. You look at that six foot, kind of a slight stature to him. He's always been a player that has to play with a chip on his shoulder and, and, and kind of prove um people wrong you know i think there's a lot of schools you know n eventually you know the offers obviously rolled in but they were they were slow to offer him at first because of his size um so that's something he's always battled with he's a player that plays with a chip on his shoulder and i think he's actually in a good spot right now i think you know having that that year to mature but also to kind of regain that edge might be beneficial you know in terms of his production this season 
He's Tony Sukos. I'm Mick Gillespie. Thanks for hanging out with us on Bama Insider and BamaInsider.com. Thumbs up, subscribe as we talk Alabama football. Spring practice is here. Well, it starts on Friday. So many of you probably watching this in spring practice will have already started. Bryce Young goes into this spring camp in a quarterback battle with Paul Tyson, but we all anticipate that this is his job to lose. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, look, Bryce Young was the only other quarterback besides Mac Jones to take reps last season. Um, I, I think you're going to see a matured Bryce Young this year. I think, you know, some of the struggles that he had last year uh, were, were situational. I, I, it's really hard to do a lot when you're coming in during a blowout. and the, Primarily your job is just to hand the ball off to the running back twice and then you know, typically you're facing a third and long because at that point the defense knows you're just running out the clock. Um, I think you saw Bryce maybe try to hold on to the football a little bit too long to, to to force some of those big plays, and that obviously resulted in a few sacks and a couple fumbles. I don't think you're going to see that this year, it, you know, especially if Bryce Young is able to kind of have a, a successful spring, really kind of get himself rooted in that quarterback, that starting quarterback role, uh, get used to Bill O'Brien's offense. Uh, if that's the case, I think we're going to see a more confident Bryce Young. Um, he'll obviously get a chance to gel more with his receivers. And so I, I think you're going to see a progression from some of those freshman mistakes, which is understandable. Uh, when you look at a, a rookie quarterback, they're always going to to make some you know, mistakes, generally trying to do too much. I think you're going to see a more settled Bryce Young. Uh, that will allow his skill set to really sh- uh, shine because you know, he's a guy that can do it uh, with his legs, but really with his arm as well. So you got John Parker Wilson, Greg McElroy, A.J. McCarron, uh, Blake Sims, Jake Coker. I think I got that right. Sims, then Coker. Mm-hmm. And then Jalen Hurts. Then Tua. Then Mac. What do they all have in common? Uh, well, the, the, the list keeps on getting better at, at the end. I mean, no offense to, to our buddy John Parker Wilson, but when you, when you, you go from – from that, you know, being more of a three-star uh, kind of, you know, uh, you know, just a, a prote- protected quarterback, you know, um, t- to a playmaker like, you know, Jalen Hurts and, and Tua Tungavailoa and now Mac Jones setting records. It seems like Alabama is now starting to, uh, you know, recruit top-end quarterbacks. Bryce Young would certainly fall under that list. Right. But what my, my point is that all of them have won. That's uh, true as well. well yeah. I mean, like, it doesn't really matter who they put in that spot. Alabama seems to win football games. I mean, talent-wise, we can debate. I feel like uh, Greg McElroy is probably the least talented of those guys as far as physical talent, but he's mentally was a great quarterback. John Parker Wilson, I think he would have won a national championship had he been the starter in 09. Uh, We will never know, but, you know, 08, they, they got to the SEC title game with uh with john parker and you know it was really his crew that went on the win you got blake sims who um you know just wasn't a quarterback to me he was a running back they put him at quarterback but they still won i mean look at the job that alabama was able to do with him lane kiffin his offensive coordinator give him a lot of credit but looking back on that you're going okay you know, there, there were a lot of weaknesses there. There were a lot of strengths, too. He could run the football, but he definitely w- just wasn't the thrower that it that it takes. Jalen Hurts developed as a freshman quarterback. Who would have thought that he would have led Alabama the way that he did? And then you're talking about two and Mac, different level quarterbacks, and now Bryce Young. I think when you're looking at Bryce Young, what sets him apart is he might be the most dual threat of of any of these guys, you know, I, I think he's still a guy. I, I think he's going to hurt you more with his arms than his legs, but he will definitely be able to hurt teams with his legs. Um, I think, you know, he might not be as much of a productive runner as, as Jalen hurts was because Jalen hurts. Let's, let's not forget was maybe the best at rushing the ball on the team when he played for Alabama better than the running backs as well. He, he was, he was great with the ball in his hands. Um, I'm not sure that Bryce Young is going to match that particularly with with his feet, but obviously he's going to come in uh, very polished uh, in the passing game. And I think he's going to be the most balanced of of the dual threat guys that Alabama's had, um, which is going to be a handful for for opposing defenses. And I I think it's going to be crucial on this year's team, too, because, you know, unlike what Mac Jones had 
um, with established offensive line that was the best in college football. I think Bryce Young's going to have a solid group in front of him, but it's going to be a new group. And it's going to be some guys that are going to either be in different spots or, you know, they're, they're new starters. I think it's going to take some time for that to gel. So you might need a guy that's able to kind of move around in the pocket, scramble, make some plays. Uh, so I think Bryce Young is exactly what Alabama needs at the moment, uh, it, you know, for where it's at as a team. Last year he came into the games and looked a little tentative. He, he seemed to get hit a lot more than Mac Jones, not always sure where to throw the football. Uh, you know, who knows how healthy he was, even though he wasn't playing every day in, you know, as far as starting. I mean, he still was practicing every day. How's that part of his game going to improve? There's obviously a little bit of question of, you know, can he hold up, you know, six foot 194, I think it is 196. Um, that's lighter than you look at Alabama's previous quarterbacks, you know, uh, Jones was a beefy guy. Uh, Tua was same. Uh Jalen Hurts looked like a linebacker at the time. So, I mean, like they had some meat on their bones where, where Bryce is a little bit slimmer. He's put on some weight, which will help him a lot at the college level. Uh, as far as holding on to the ball, I just think that some of that was circumstantial. I, I think, you know, you get a five-star kid wants to make plays, you, you give him a third and eight and a blowout game, and he doesn't want to throw the ball away. You know, if you're only getting, you know, two or three series, you know, during a blowout game, you don't want to throw it throw away the ball and third down, even if it is probably the better, you know, option. So you might see him hold on to a ball where he takes a sack. And I think this year he's not going to have that pressure of, Oh my God, I need to make a play right now. Or, you know, I'm never going to have a chance to impress. I think he's going to know that he's the guy. And if it, if the play is to throw the ball away, I think he's going to have the maturity to do so. Give me one fact that you discovered that surprised you about Bryce Young as you've been researching him? One of the interesting things, and this, you know, was early on in, in Bryce's career was, but uh, his, his father, Craig, um, you know, he was told early, really early in, in Bryce's career that, uh, that Bryce might not even be able to play quarterback because it's too small, you know? And I, I think what you realize is that, you know, you look at Bryce Young, the, the quarterback uh, that that's the number one quarterback in his class, five-star kid and you don't really think about the fact that yeah sure he was an elite prospect but he still had to prove himself because of that size throughout his career and I, I think that helped mold him into the to the athlete and the player you know that he is uh having that chip on his shoulder and, and always having to be somewhat doubted you know you you don't really expect a kid as talented as Bryce to face the doubt that he faced you know during his career but replacing guys like Daniels um, and, and just the, the having to prove himself, you know, Bryce Young was the, the top rated quarterback, but he didn't get that until the final rankings. So, um, he, I think it's going to help him. I think, you know, it, it, that's an, you know, an advantage for him coming into a season where he's going to have to replace Mac Jones, who had one of the statistically best seasons out of any college quarterback ever. Um, so I, I think that's, it, it ends up being an advantage for him, but I, I, you know, for one, didn't quite realize some of the, uh, doubt that he, kind of proved himself past throughout his career with spring practice dead ahead and COVID and COVID protocol still underway. How will you cover Alabama this year uh, for the spring game? Yeah, well, we're, it's going to be kind of similar to the season, you know, we're, we're not going to get access behind the scenes. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to try to, to handle things the way we did during the season. Um, you know, kind of rely on some of our sources that maybe if, if there is some extra eyes during practice or just, you know, yeah, I'm sure the university will send some footage. We can kind of pour over that. And I'm sure, you know, you and I will be talking about the, the little snippets we see of, of the quarterback battle. Uh, obviously, there'll be some scrimmages, too, that we'll be able to find out some information from. And then, you know, we'll get to see it all come together during a day, which I think is going to be highly anticipated this year because, uh, you know, just because of the. Uh, the quarterback battle and just uh, uh, various battles in between. A day game is April 17th at Bryant Denny stadium. And Tony, you're right. This is one of the most anticipated a day games in a long time because Alabama is in the midst of a quarterback battle. I mean, we assume Bryce Young's going to get it, but don't tell Paul Tyson that. 
And where we are today might not be where we are when we have the spring game. It'll be fun, though, to see what Bryce Young and Paul Tyson and the, the new receivers and the new running backs and this whole new offense looks like and just how good and experienced the defense is. Definitely. It's definitely going to be uh, it's definitely going to be very fun to watch. And I, I'm just looking forward to it. Awesome. All right. Well, that's Tony Sukos. I'm Mick Gillespie. Thanks for hanging out with us. Give us a thumbs up as you watch on Bama Insider and the Bama Insider YouTube channel. You can read Tony's work all the time at BamaInsider.com.